growing in his word. God bless you guys. Listen, man, last week was Revelation 18, and it was radical because it was talking about Babylon, but this chapter is even more radical. <laughs> We're getting into Revelation 19, man. This is where heaven exalts over Babylon, and the, the Lord is going to fulfill his calling upon this earth. It's a heavenly battle, but it's also a spiritual battle. God bless you guys. Father, we come before you, Lord. We thank you for this time. We ask in your name, Jesus, to, Lord, anoint this chapter, anoint this time in Jesus' name. Lord, speak to us, Father. Amen. Amen. Listen, this is a huge milestone, man, because the concluding lament over the fall of the great city of Babylon comes from an angel powerful enough to hurl a huge milestone weighing thousands of pounds into the sea as an, as an illustration of the swiftness and violence of Babylon's judgment. And this is what's going on, believers. Judgment is coming. God is on the throne. We don't have to worry about it. The great heart is going to get disrupted and destroyed. It's going to be radical. Uh, I had a dream, man, about Christ being on a white horse, man. And this is, I'm excited because this is the actual chapter that I get to talk about my dream. <laughs> what an exciting time we're talking about today. Believers, if you're being attacked out there, remember Jesus Christ is in love with you and he's got a plan for you. Don't let the devil lie to you and tell you that you're you're going through this isolation period and you know, surround yourself by other believers and get into the word of God and receive the word of God because Jesus said, I am the word of God. Remember that? I am the way, the truth, and the light. But he also said in John chapter 1, John, he said, in the beginning was the word. And a lot of believers, they forget about this. They forget about the, the, the fact that God is the word and he can fix it. And so last week we were in the fall of Babylon the Great. And we talked about how the earth's view and the destruction and how the great riches came to nothing and the shipmasters seen the, uh, you know, Babylon being destroyed. We talked about the, the Babylon. It's called a rebellion against God. It's the, uh, you know, old, old time prophets called it the, uh, you know, the capital of the empire. And God, that, you know, was raining its sin upon and reaping havoc on this earth. Here we go, man. We're back on the saddle again, man. Nations were deceived, and, 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 and in her was found the blood of the prophets and the saints and all those who were slain on the earth, man. That's what we talked about last week. Finally, Babylon fell. But now we're going to have a spiritual, heavenly exaltation over the fall of Babylon, and we're seeing how Satan is going to be taken out the uh, but it says in, in Revelation here, chapter 18, verse 23, it says, The light of a lamp shall not shine in you anymore, and the voice of the bridegroom and the bride shall not be heard in you anymore. For you are merchants, were the great men of the earth, for by, by your sorcery all the nations were deceived, and in her was found the blood of the prophets and the saints, and all those who were slain on the earth. Amazing. Now God's going to come back, He's going to say, Look. The white horse is riding, the, you know, the beast and his armies are going to be defeated. And we see the marriage in the marriage supper. <laughs> I'm so excited, man, because listen, the marriage supper is so radical because uh, the Bible teaches that, you know, uh, the marriage suppers of John's day basically would begin like uh, of, on the evening of the wedding. Okay, but the celebration might continue for days. And the marriage supper here is basically a time of joyous feasting to be enjoyed by the church and especially by those who, by the overcomers who will reign with Christ. And the key is, is listen, believers, the key to being able to participate in the wedding banquet is faithfulness to God. And so God here is saying, look, I'm back on the horse. I'm coming, all the trials and tribulations that you're going through in this life, the testing, the uh, trying, the problems, the trials, God's saying, look, I'm, I'm going to bless you now. It's, it's over. Look, it's over. And so here we are. We, 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 we see other pastors and other uh, leaders, they, they want to talk about how we got to be afraid of the end. You know, Revelation is a, is a love letter. And God doesn't write 
scary letters, man. He, he writes love letters. So believers, I want you to understand that Jesus Christ sent an angel to the island of Patmos. And, and, and speaking of this trial, listen, believer, can you imagine being John? They try to cook him in oil. They try to boil the guy, but God stopped the cooking. He escaped to the island of Patmos. They chased him to the island. He's going through trials. Can you imagine? He's thinking, everyone's dead but me. I'm isolated on an island. I have nobody. I'm afraid. Satan has singled me out, and I don't know what to do, and he's scared. And, you know, the devil's telling him, drink some salt water, man. You know, get all psycho on. But no, he doesn't. He stops. And he does what the Lord says. And he says to be still for you know that I am the Lord. And so what happens is John has this beautiful angel come. Okay. Not like the angel of Moroni. The Mormon, Mormon you know, cult. But he talks about here. Jesus says he sends this angel. And this angel is being sent to John to remind him of this is what is going to happen in the end for us believers. John was casted away to an island, chased off to Patmos to write this so that we believers could have a beautiful, beautiful reminder that Jesus Christ is in control. Amen. Amen. So listen, hallelujah, man. We're talking about Psalms here. The Lord, Psalms 150. It's the Greek translation, man, for revelation. Look, God wants to know you. Revelation chapter 19, verse 1 says, after these things... I heard a loud voice of a great multitude in heaven saying, Alleluia, salvation and glory and honor and power belong to the Lord our God. Wow, amazing. So listen, all the power, all the glory, salvation and honor and power belong to the Lord Jesus Christ. Because verse 2 says, For true and righteous are his judgments. Because he has judged the great harlot, you know, in Revelation chapter 17, who corrupted the earth with her fornication, and he has avenged on her the blood of his, of his servants, shedded by her. These are the believers that are in, that in the end are killed for the Lord, who suffer. God's getting his vengeance now. That's why it's important that it says in the Bible, Jesus says, vengeance is mine, thus says the Lord, and not for us to take action. Listen. I'm excited. I'm sorry, you guys. I got to slow down. I know. Revelation 8, 19 is, is we're, we're going to see the, the, the uh, heart it's judged and we're, and we're going to move on to greater and awesome things. Believers, you guys ready, man? I'm, I'm excited. I'm sorry. We are living in a, in a radical time and we see a lot of the stuff that is dealt with today reminds us of, of what's going on now. And so... Basically, Jesus Christ, he's going to testify to the churches, like it says, man, right here in Revelation chapter 21, the end of the book. You know, he says, and behold, in verse 12, I am coming quickly and my reward is with me to give to everyone according to his work. I am the Alpha and the Omega and the beginning and the end, the first and the last. Isn't that radical? He was already here before and he already knew before the foundations of the world that you were going to be born and he had your name already written in the Lamb's Book of Life if you were if you're born again and you were baptized in him. Not that baptizing really saves you. It's an outwards works of appearance and Galatians talks about that. It's not the water that saves you. It's the you know it's the gathering and realizing that Christ can be there for you no matter what. We gotta be strong believers. Listen, Satan is out there prowling like a lion. And so he goes on to say in verse two, for true and righteous are his judgments because he has judged the great harlot. He's judged her. Here he's judged her. This is a recap of Revelation 18. And so who corrupted the earth? The beast. Remember that believers. It's avenged their, he's avenged their blood and, and the blood of his servants shed it by her. So, Whatever you're going through, the devil's going to get it. He, there, well, you're never gonna, he's never going to win. Again, they said, Alleluia. Now remember, this is, this is heaven, man. This isn't on earth. We're talking about heaven now. Now, heaven is, 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 is exulting over the destruction of Babylon. Listen, man, they're like, get them. <laughs> the army's in heaven, man. They're angelic hosts. Look at Matthew chapter 26. It talks about that. It talks about how it speaks to those with the Lord at his coming. 
as being called chosen and faithful. See, because all the terms for believers talks about that. And if you go to chapter uh, Romans chapter uh, one seven and Ephesians chapter one, and also Peter chapter uh, it was Peter uh, chapter two verse nine, it talks about that man. And so. It's radical, man. You, you believers, I know you're suffering, but listen, Jesus suffered before us. And so now the destruction is happening. This is my favorite chapter in the whole Bible because I get to see the devil pretty much get destroyed here. What a radical day, man, because you know what? Listen, God, no matter what, God's in control. And so we know that the armies in heaven are actually here now seated and the bible says in ephesians that we're seated with christ so we know that the angels and the hosts and all that they're with us we don't got to worry man a lot of us even me i worry and god tells me you'll see what the heck's wrong with you don't forget that i'm perfect and you're not and so our character gets out of whack because we're used to this fleshly body that we don't have control. We have control over our, our, our actions and our thoughts, but we, 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 we have to understand that Christ is now in control and he always has been. And so we have to understand that God, no matter what, is going to win in the end. We win. We are victorious in Christ, believers. We don't need alcohol. We don't need pills. We don't need um, anything to separate us because Christ said there's nothing that can separate us from the love of him. Nothing, nobody, not even the bottom of the ocean, man. Nothing. There's nothing that can separate us from the love that he has for us, believers. And so verse 4 says, listen to this, actually. And verse 3 says, and again they said, Alleluia. Her smoke rises up forever and ever. And the 24 elders and the four living creatures fell down and worshiped God who sat on the throne saying, Amen, Alleluia. Then a voice came from the throne saying, Praise our God, all you his servants and those who fear him, both small and great. Wow, wow, this is big time. Look, verse six, I gotta, I'm almost finished. Verse six says, And I heard as it is were, the voice of great multitude as the sound of many waters. Remember, God's voice is as of many waters and as of the sound of mighty thundering saying alleluia for the lord god omnipotent reigns let us be glad and rejoice and give him glory for the marriage of the lamb has come and his wife has made herself ready <laughs> this is what it's about man I'm, i don't know how to say it so man listen this is more than just a wife listen I want to tell you something. I'm going to stop at verse 7 and let me explain something to you. For some of us men out there, can you imagine the love of your life? And you, 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 you were there saying, wow, oh, you're so beautiful. I love you. You're my first, my last. You're my this, you're my that. And us men are like, I don't know about that. I've been married for 28 years. <laughs> That's not what we're talking about. We're talking about Jesus Christ coming for the church. He loves us. It's amazing because we need to replace humans with Christ. And if we do that, we'll feel way better about ourselves. We won't be so dependent on our problem, but we'll be remaining in Christ. After all, Christ said, uh, if I remain in you, Apart from us, we can do nothing if we're not together. So it's critical that we believers understand the power of the Holy Spirit. Look, I'm not going to preach fire and brimstone. I'm not going to tell you that, oh, you know, God's coming to destroy the world. We're not going to be here when that happens. Listen. It's important. Verse 7 says, Let us be glad and rejoice and give him glory, for the marriage of the Lamb has come. You see, here the Lord is glorified specifically because the marriage of the Lamb has come. At last, Hosea chapter 2, 19 talks about it in Ephesians 5, 23. But God's people are viewed as the Lord's 
Piroth bride, or the wife. The bride of that time would make herself ready by bathing, rubbing oil on her and perfume, and, and, and her hair would be specially fixed, and she would be wearing her wedding gown, and all the people would be there, and, and you know, and you have all these people, oh, how she's beautiful, oh, wow, she's so beautiful for you, oh, wow, she smells so sweet. But then, men, what are we doing? Women, what are we doing? Is our husband, is our wife been replaced by Jesus Christ? Are we pretty for Jesus? Or, or are we pretty when there's, a, when there's no problems? Are we to put our makeup on women for Jesus? When things are not going so well? Come on. God wants us to be pretty for him. He's coming for us. And this in itself is so exciting. I, I, mean, I just can't believe that he's coming back for us on a white horse. I mean, I had a dream about it. And he wants us to be ready. And you may be thinking, well, why doesn't he come now? Why doesn't he come yesterday? Why don't he come tomorrow? I don't believe it. Because he doesn't want to catch you when you're on, to, on your time. He wants to catch you off guard. Because he wants to test the ones who really love him. After all, it's like your wife. You really love her? Well, you can't compare my wife to God. I'm not doing that. All I'm saying is, believers, check yourself. Jesus Christ is coming for the church. He's coming for you. Are you ready? Are you rejoicing? Are you giving him glory for the marriage? Are you giving him credit where it's deserved? Are you giving him glory? Are you saying, look, I'm ready. My wife made herself ready. And to her, it was granted to be a rain and fine linen, clean and bright. Are we becoming clean and bright? Listen. Because here it says, in verse 8 it says, And to her it was granted to be arraigned in fine linen, clean and bright, for the fine linen is the righteous acts of the saints. Who are the saints? They're believers. They're you. They're me. In verse 9, he said, be, in a verse 8, he says, Be ready. Be ready. I'm coming for you. In Revelation chapter 22, it says, He who testifies to these things says, Surely I'm coming quickly. Even listen. Amen. Even so come, Lord Jesus. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ be with you all. Amen. Believers, that's the last words of the Bible. Are you happy? No, I haven't got my money yet. Dude, who cares about your money? Are you happy? I haven't gotten my fame yet. I haven't gotten a million hits on YouTube. Oh, you poor thing. You can't make your 4000 a month off people. Dude, get your eyes off money, off of things, off of things that are, that are going to rot in, in, in this earth and collect moths like it says in Matthew. Don't store up treasures on earth. Jesus said, put on your makeup for me, women. Men, put on your tuxedos. That means get in your word. Eat the word of God because it'll never return void. Get with Christ. Get with him. He loves you. The Bible is what it's about. Don't let the great harlot fool you. Satan has been destroyed. Finally, Babylon fell. Now, the heavens are excited. Verse 9 says, then he said to me, write, write, write it, write it, dude. Yo, 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 write. Blessed are those who are called to the marriage supper of the Lamb. <laughs> oh, I love it. And he said to me, these are the true sayings of God. And I fell at his feet to worship him. But he said to me, see that you do not do that. I'm your fellow servant and of your brethren who have the testimony of Jesus. Worship God, bro. He didn't say, bro. He said, worship God for the testimony of Jesus is the spirit of prophecy, man. <laughs> it's amazing, bro. He's like, don't shoot the messenger. Bro, worship Jesus. And then this is where it gets radical. 
This is the dream I had at 3.30 in the morning. In 2006, 3.30 to 4 a.m. in the morning. A whole half an hour, man. I had this dream. It's radical. And I got 10 minutes to tell it, Lord willing, <laughs> if I don't get raptured. Lord, come. God's coming back, man, for the martyrs, the blood of the slain. You know, he's going to get what he's got coming. They're going to get what they got coming. The people who suffer throughout history. And, the, you know, God's going to get the people who treated people nasty. We just have to wait and not be happy when he does it. But pray for them. You see, because all can come to Christ. Here we are on the, on, on the dream that I had. In verse 11, it says, Now I saw heaven open, like he did in Revelation 4. Remember when John seen heaven open in Revelation 4, for chapter 4, the door open. We, I preached about it, the Lord in me, and the rapture happened. But here he says, now remember, believers, Revelation is not in chronological order. It's not. Never has been. Verse 11 says, Now I saw heaven open, and beloved, and behold, a white horse, and he who sat on it, on him, was called faithful and true, and in righteousness he judges and makes war. Believers, Jesus Christ, get your note, ta you note takers, get your pencils and papers. Listen, Jesus Christ is faithful. Number number two, he's true. Everything he says is true. He's not a liar. That means he's truthful. So if you read it in the Bible that he's faithful, then he, then he says he's faithful. Amen? Amen. And so in this truth, he has righteousness and he judges and he makes war. Verse 12 says, his eyes were like flame on fire and on his head were many crowns. He had the name written that no one knew except himself. For he was clothed with a robe, dipped in blood, and his name is called the Word of God. Believers, this is what I'm talking about. Man, we're talking about a chapter that Jesus Christ wants us to worship him in spirit and in truth. He doesn't want it half-hearted. He wants us to keep worshiping him and loving him. I've been to congregations where they're just like dry worship, man. It's like, uh, it's like, dude, really? We got to understand that praising the Lord is, is really, really important. And, and, and when we do it, we do it wholeheartedly, not half-heartedly. And the marriage of the Lamb, one of the reasons this great multitude is filled with praise is because the time has come for the Lamb of God to be joined into His people. We don't want Him coming back going, <laughs> You're thinking, if you're living like that right now, it's because you have issues. And I'm trying to get you back on track where you need to be excited, man. A lot of people are like, man, this guy, you know, the other day I was out at this one guy and he says, oh, wow, I've been saved for 40 years. Oh, how, how cute. Look at him. He's excited. Excuse me, bro. God wants you to be excited about Jesus. He wants you to be excited about his business. He's coming back, man. He wants you to bring out people to the marriage. There's going to be a marriage. <laughs> picture the marriage, man. You know, the marriage of the lamb who is the Messiah is, is a picture used frequently throughout the scripture. Look at the Old Testament. Listen, believers, Israel is presented as God's wife, right? Okay, who is often unfaithful. Read Hosea chapter 2, verse 19 through 20 and Isaiah 54 and Ezekiel 16. Sorry if I'm going too fast. Now, look. We have, in the New Testament, the church, it's presented as, as the finance of Jesus is waiting for this day of marriage. In Corinthians chapter 11 and Ephesians 5, 25, verse 32, and etc. Now, in a biblical time of marriage involves two major events, right? The brothel and the wedding. These are normally separated by a period of time during which two individuals were considered husband and wife. But see, here we have the wedding, it's beginning with the procession to the bride's house and it follows on down to the groom, et cetera, yada, yada. Christ here, okay, by analogy, the church, is now, uh, we see, awaits 
In Greek, it's parousia. Okay, so when the heavenly groom will come for his bride and return to heaven for the marriage feast, which lasts throughout eternity. We have a perfect match, but we need to be clean and bright before him. In Hebrew, I mean, it's it, it, in Greek, it's katharos. It's it, it reflects purity and loyalty and faithfulness and character of the new Jerusalem. And it's bright, lampros. It's the color of radiant whiteness. I'm not saying to spray yourself with white powder and get on fire for Jesus. I'm saying, believers, stop worrying. Stop tripping out, man, and not understanding that God's in control because he's in control. He's going to be there no matter what you go through. But we have a choice to make. And the choice is simple. Sit and rest and trust that Jesus Christ will be there no matter what. Don't let the devil lie to you and tell you that you're stupid or that you're no good or that you don't have a right to live anymore. He's a liar and he's a thief. Remember that. Satan came to rob your joy, steal your love. He's Dr. Coldheart on Care Bears. <laughs> you know, when you're a kid, I don't know where that came from, but he's, he's evil and God is good. And God's going to get the evil in this chapter. And we don't have to worry because he's faithful. And you may be thinking, you don't understand. I have no legs and arms. No, listen, you don't understand that people die every second. You don't understand that people suffer worse. We can play that game too, but it's not about that. It's about Jesus. You're going to get married. He's already married you, women. You just got to be ready. Keep your lipstick on, your beautiful white dress, and your nails done, and your perfume, and rest. Rest in the hope of Jesus Christ. And don't worry about tomorrow, because tomorrow has its own problems. Believers, listen. Listen, Paul spoke of this desire that Christians would be presented before the Lord pure. He said, for I am jealous for you with godly jealousy. For I have berothed you to one husband that I may present you as a chaste virgin to Christ. Corinthians 11 verse 2. This should be the desire of every Christian worker. Blessed are those who are called to the marriage supper of the Lamb. Blessed indeed, Jesus himself eagerly anticipated this marriage supper, and he spoke longly of the day when he will drink the fruit of the vine again with his disciples in the kingdom. Matthew chapter 26, verse 29. In a Jewish culture, the marriage supper was the best banquet of any party one ever even known, man. Trust me. I was married in the synagogue. Believers, Jesus, on that day, everyone will see the church for what she really is, the precious bride of Jesus, the bride of Christ. It's like a sort of Cinderella. It's a Cinderella story, you know? Sitting among the ashes. She, she is like her Lord, despised and rejected of men. And so a lot of people don't understand that they don't have to do that. They can go back to the, her, the church. They can go back to Jesus. They can go back to what they were on fire for him. Spurgeon said it the best. We believers understand that these are true sayings of God. And we're going to end in this verse, but it's necessary to note that assurance for us. Okay? It'll take place. And it's going to happen soon. And John was worshiping an angel. And dude, no, he got rebuked. We don't worship angels. We worship Jesus because Jesus is the real testimony of, of God. Because the testimony of Jesus is the spirit of prophecy and he loves us. And he loves us, man. He doesn't want anything bad to happen to us. Father, we come before you, Lord. We thank you, Father, that you're going to return to this hostile earth. Lord, we pray now that you, Lord, when you come, Father, because we know that you're faithful and true, 
Lord, you will judge and you will make the war with the enemy, not us, Father. But for now, Lord, we sit, Lord, and we rest. Lord, we rest in your love and your mercy. And we pray that you bless the believers and non-believers out there, Lord, that they come and know you. We ask, Father, that you bless them in Jesus' name. God bless you guys. Listen, next week we're going to get on, man. We're going to get on to the Christ on the white horse. I'm going to finish it, I promise, the Lord in me. And we're going to stop on verse 11. Uh, and we're going to actually start, I'm sorry, it's gonna, we're going to stop on verse, uh, you know, 12. But, or 16. No, I'm sorry, we're going to stop on 11 so we don't get confused. <laughs> God bless you guys. Listen, man. Welcome, you know, to this awesome broadcast. And if you're hearing this on the radio for the first time, remember, we're, a, we're not a 501c3. We don't give, uh, we don't accept donations and we don't receive money. It's a free program. It's powered by the Holy Spirit and led by Jesus or led by the Holy Spirit and powered by Jesus. <laughs> but remember this, God bless you guys. And, and growing in his word is, is, uh, is a radical uh, free podcast and free uh, radio program where you can log on and learn God's word and learn it with joy and love and mercy. God bless you guys and and listen until next week have a radical day.